Chapter 11. Failure. Faddy could see his father's eyebrows arch in shock as he stared down at him. The passenger he'd just picked up, an elderly Chinese man, looked down in surprise as well. Get out, said Habib under his breath. Faddy quavered as the confusion on his father's face turned to anger. Faddy crawled out, grabbing his backpack, which had fallen off. I'm so sorry, sir, said Habib, turning to his passenger. This is my son. If you don't mind, he'll be riding in the front with me. No problem, said the man. Very unexpected, but what can we do with the youth today? He shook his head sadly. All troublemakers. The tips of his ears burning with shame, Faddy slunk into the front seat. He looked in the side mirror and watched his father place two heavy suitcases into the trunk. Meanwhile, the crotchety old passenger let himself into the back seat and put his walking stick across his legs. Then he leaned back and closed his eyes with a deep sigh of exhaustion. How am I going to explain this? Faddy clasped a wary glance at his father. His stomach felt like it was on a wild roller coaster ride. Habib climbed into the driver's seat and pulled on his seatbelt. He ignored Faddy, turned on his blinker and merged with traffic exiting the airport. Boy, am I in big trouble. What am I going to say? Faddy turned his face to the side window and stared at the airport disappearing behind them. A line of planes stood at the gates and on the tarmac, one of them painted with the bright red Virgin Atlantic symbol. I'm such a loser. I couldn't even get out of the trunk, let alone onto a plane. I failed Mariam. Again. The rest of the ride passed in silence as Habib drove north toward downtown San Francisco. Soon a soft sound of snoring filtered in from the back. The passenger had nodded off. For a moment, Faddy's fear and embarrassment melted away as the taxi was shrouded in wisps of fog rolling in from the bay. Habib eased his foot from the gas, driving at a safer speed as light from the headlights bounced against the mist, creating a glow around the car. The fog ebbed away as they climbed a sloping hill. Coming around the peak, the city revealed itself with a burst of radiant light. Faddy blinked in awe taking in the sprawling landscape. Tall buildings strung with jewel-toned neon signs pierced the inky sky. Curving streets spread out in a grid, glittering with green and yellow and red traffic signals. To the right, Faddy could see the Bay Bridge stretching out towards Oakland, disappearing into plumes of fog. Pacific Bell Park sprawled below as they took an overpass, the park's bright green diamond empty. Habib drove through the financial district and headed up Divisadero Street towards the marina. It was a Friday night and the sidewalks were full of people going in and out of restaurants and cafes. Habib exited the main thoroughfare and took a right into a quiet residential neighbourhood. He stopped at a small house painted bright yellow. Sir, is this it? asked Habib, a hint of worry in his voice. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes it is said the passenger, snorting as he blinked his eyes. Wonderful, said Habib. He pushed open the door to help the man with his luggage. Study hard, young man, said the passenger, bending down to look through the driver's window. He tapped on the steering wheel with his cane. If you don't study and work hard, you'll end up a taxi driver like your father. Faddy angrily opened his mouth but saw the look of warning in his father's face through the windshield. How dare he! Doesn't he know my father has a PhD? He wanted to grab the walking stick and snap it in two. Then the anger deflated. Of course he doesn't know my father has multiple graduate degrees. How could he? To the man, my father is just a poor taxi driver, and I'm his troublemaking son. Habib took his fee and got back into the car. Faddy looked at him under his eyelashes and was surprised to see a deflated expression on his father's face. Faddy's breath caught in his throat and a sense of sadness wafted over him. He looked away as Habib pulled away from the house. Faddy braced himself for a tongue lashing but as the minutes passed his father remained silent. 
Fadi cast a look at his father's tired profile and kept his mouth shut. Habib took a right back onto the Visadero and headed deeper into the city. He drove past a large hospital and pulled into a diner with a line of police cars parked out front. Uh, you, you're not having me arrested, are you? said Fadi, sitting up straighter. Did you do something illegal? asked Habib. No. Well, you won't be arrested then, said Habib. He pulled his taxi into an empty spot in the parking lot. Come on, I need some coffee. Fatty followed his father into the busy restaurant where a hostess in a beehive hairdo greeted them. A line of police officers sat at the counter eating fried egg sandwiches and exchanging notes. Table for two, please, said Habib. Certainly, said the woman. Her eyeshadow was bright blue and sparkled. I have to call the apartment first to let them know you're okay, said Habib. He pointed to the phone booth. You go ahead and sit. Fadi nodded and followed the hostess to a small booth. Here you go, kid, look it over, said the hostess. She handed him two menus. I'll send over your waiter. Fadi was halfway done reading the dinner specials when Habib returned. Are you hungry? asked Habib. Fadi shook his head. He looked down at his fingers, gripping the menu. There were traces of engine oil under his nails. Habib flipped over his menu when a man in tight purple pants and an apron came by. What can I do for you, gentlemen? he asked, holding up a piece of paper. Coffee for me, please, said Habib, and a slice of apple pie and a glass of milk for my son. Good choice, the waiter winked. It's just come out of the oven, and so I'll bring it over as soon as it's cut. As the waiter hurried away, Habib turned his attention to Fadi. Now, tell me what you were doing in the trunk of my taxi. Fadi gulped. He looked into his father's eyes. To his surprise, he didn't see anger. There was sadness there, mingled with concern. Fadi wiped away a stray tear and opened his mouth. A torrent of words spilled out, explaining the whole harebrained scheme. Habib took a deep swallow of coffee as Fadi finished his story. Then Habib paused for a few seconds as if weighing his words. So, you thought you could go back to Peshawar and find Mariam. Hearing his father say it aloud made Fadi realise how stupid the idea had been. Reluctantly, he nodded. Fadi Jan, I commend you for your desire to find Mariam, said Habib softly. Fadi's head jerked up. He's not yelling at me. But what you were doing was illegal. You could have gotten into a lot of trouble. Even if you had gotten onto the plane, you would have been caught when exchanging flights in London. If you had by some miracle gotten onto a flight to Peshawar, you would most assuredly been arrested by immigration officers. Do you know you need a visa to enter the United Kingdom and Pakistan? A visa? said Fadi. A visa is a permit given by a country allowing a traveller to enter. It's kind of like getting permission to come visit. So, to go to London you would need a transit visa to travel through that country. Then, you'd need a visa from the Pakistan embassy to go to their country. Jeez, thought Fadi. I didn't know that. The probability of you succeeding with your plan was pretty much zero, said Habib. He didn't yell or get mad, he just stated the facts. Oh, said Fadi, feeling like a dumb donkey. Waves of embarrassment radiated through him. Even his ears were hot with shame. As the waiter came by and refilled Habib's cup, Fadi glanced at the table next to them. A group of police officers chatted jovially, drinking coffee. Their black uniforms contrasted with the white and chrome tables, reminding him of the black turban Taliban. But, whispered Fadi, what if she's not found? Habib added four cubes of sugar to his coffee and stirred slowly. She will be found, he said, his voice confident. How can you be so sure? Asked Fadi, expressing his worst fear, which he'd never spoken out loud. 
She will be found, repeated Habib, his lips compressed into a tight line. He paused for a moment and looked Fadi in the eye. I'm going to tell you something that I have not told anyone else. Fadi gulped down his mouthful of pie and sat back in surprise. Can you keep a secret? asked Habib. Fadi nodded in a rush. Habib twirled the spoon in his fingers as if weighing his words. After we found out that Mariam was picked up by that family, I sent Professor Sahib five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? echoed Fadi. Where did he get that type of money from? I collected it from driving the taxi and borrowed some, said Habib as if hearing Fadi's unspoken question. Professor Sahib and I have hired private investigators. Private investigators, mumbled Fadi, imagining men in trench coats with magnifying glasses skulking around for clues. There are men, murmured Habib, ex-army officers, mercenaries and drug runners who can be hired to find things out. Hopefully, they'll find information on what happened to Mariam after the truck left. Oh, said Fadi, hope flaring in his chest. It's no guarantee, said Habib, his voice grim. Just have patience. And keep praying for Allah answers our prayers in one way or another. Fadi nodded. Patience and prayer. Not a very satisfactory answer. Now, in regards to hiding in the trunk of my car, said Habib, his voice hardening, that was one of the stupidest things you could have done. You could have been seriously hurt. As his father lectured him on his foolish behaviour, Fadi tried to put on a sufficiently sorry expression. He didn't mind the lecture one bit. His father loved him.